I'm a, I'm a physicist, and mm -hmm. you know I'm really only trying to address the problem of getting electricity to people who don't have enough of it, and getting a lot of electricity to those people. Anyone who doesn't want to be slaving over washing their clothes shouldn't have to, you know. And there is enough there is enough energy in the world for us to do that. I internalize a lot of the dynamics in in our world and it, it becomes overwhelming and art is a way that I can I can like filter it through my own lens and make sense of it in my own way by reiterating it. The image at the center of my piece is one of an African woman milling grain with a pestle and mortar and this has to do with uh, my innovator's origin story of why he got into the solar technology in the first place. He was working with Doctors Without Borders in Africa. He witnessed a lot of young women developing onset arthritis from consistent milling of grain. And he felt that if he could get electricity at a level that's cheap enough and accessible enough, then he could mitigate these types of suffering. And I find that a really beautiful starting point and origin point for his story and for where he's coming from but also for where I'm coming from thinking about energy and technology and this intersection of the two. The energy consumption that we have right now, our lifestyle is part of our identity and identity is formed over decades and decades and decades and it's like how can you get a whole population to switch their identity and I think that could be found in like through innovation, but innovation that, that, that changes our basic behavior. The game Chin Loan that I'm obsessed with, which is like a game from Myanmar, it's, it's a form of active meditation. I see that as a type of game that actually has the ability to change people's perception about the world, how they interact with the world, and how they, they deal and interact with their daily routines. And the game itself is about like, how can you share properly? It's about passing a ball in between each other and creating as much beauty out of it. I keep getting a relation in my mind to a famous painting by Delacroix. He's a French artist and there's a painting called uh, Lady Liberty Leading the People. It's a fictional image of, of sort of the symbol of liberty and she's leading the, you know, the masses behind her, the French Revolution over this cliff, over this hill, and her head is turned to the side and I see a, a slight correlation there within this image of the woman milling and pounding away as though it's it's this this need and this drive to mitigate suffering to uh, to free up our time that's simultaneously helping us and hurting us and I think that's the inherent disconnect within technologies that it's 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 easy for that to gallop away from us I consider myself to be massively privileged. Some people wouldn't be able to start a company because the notion of, of bankruptcy and failure is just too much to take. Uh, but if I go bankrupt, I don't think I'll, I don't think it'll bother me that much. And so I'm, you know, able to just kind of make bold steps. I would say most art came from a moment when like we had an abundance of time and which usually had to do with a technological advancement. Like we were able to, to have time to think about the world and to think about how do we interact with the world around us. And I think that's sort of the space that art inhabits. And the more I've, I've worked on this project, the more I realized that in our part of the world and the fact that we have such a privilege for having the abundance of materials, resources, time, that we were able to innovate. This image keeps coming back to me of, of sort of these light towers, which are gonna be made out of the um, refuse material from his old solar panels, but lit up from below, they, they'll kind of feel like these, these moments of innovation that are kind of flowing out of this abundance of material. Without his ability to, to produce and to waste, he wasn't able to create something that was thinking outside that box because you can't completely think of an end game before you start it. And you have to just create to know what's gonna work. It's nice in this situation that I get to use some of his materials and at least be able to, in a sense, like recycle some of that waste and give it a sense of purpose. 
throughout this whole process, I've had such a massive plethora of materials. I have a massive abundance of ideas. I have a massive abundance of inspiration that I can pull from, but I have a massive scarcity of time. And that's what's able to create this piece and to put it into this sort of lens and force myself to sort of shed all of the one, all of the ideas that feel superfluous to grab onto some sort of core and some sort of message. When JP had to sort of go back to the drawing table, it led him to a point of scarcity, one where he, he had a very small amount of time and money, and he had to create something that was more efficient, more dynamic, and more versatile. And I think through that moment of not having, he was able to, to create something that was better than before. This whole issue is incredibly overwhelming and it's incredibly hard and it's so easy to, to want to ignore it and deny it, but this problem is just another problem.